Okay, whenever. Uh, welcome to the Planning Commission for October 25th, 2022. Uh, Roy City uh, Small Training Room. And we will begin. Uh, Commissioner Brand, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do we have any declaration of conflict to bring forward? No. 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 Uh, look for an approval of the seven, September 13th um, minutes. Make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for September 13th. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It passes, and then we will go to the training, and we will turn it over to Steve. Okay. Thank you. Well, it seems that all of you sent in a plethora of questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. The dog ate mine. Yeah, I only got one question, and apparently I didn't bring it. <laughs> So Janelle, do you want to? Well, I wasn't sure if it really related to this or not. It doesn't, but I'll answer it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious um, what our impact fees are for the city when a new developer comes in, like how that works. How it works or what they are? Well, mostly how it works. But well, it, it usually applies to, you know, commercial building when they get a permit, there's different types of permits. A lot of times, most of them don't know who the tenants are, mm -hmm. so they do what they just do a shell. Mm -hmm. So get the footing foundation, get the building up, but the inside is not finished yet. So when they do a tenant finish, that's when the impact fees start hitting. The biggest one we have is North Davis Sewer, which isn't really isn't ours. It's just North Davis themselves. Uh, we do have culinary water, sanitary water, and storm sewer and parks. Mm -hmm. um, everything else like fire, police and stuff, I mean the city's built out a new development here, a new development there, it doesn't impact them. Mm -hmm. But the sewer, the water and the storm drain, it, it all does impact. Okay. I'm so, just curious how that worked here just because we are so built out. Like, yeah. Other cities, it's, you know, other cities. it's everything. Yeah. Like, you know, West Haven, you know. They got all this land to the west that's not developed that impacts their police department where ours are more infill, so the police is already driving past it nine times a day. So Okay. I was just curious how that worked. No, there, no, so. you're fine. Figured I'd answer that before I figured out which hat you guys wore. <laughs> <laughs> is that the video today? Oh no. Oh, no. But I thought you guys would get a kick out of that email. <laughs> Ask your questions, or we'll figure out which hat you wear. I guess I didn't. Did you miss that? that? I didn't see, <laughs> I didn't see that. that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw that. I got that. I know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, some of it again. It's just more of the required type stuff. Uh, let's see, is it part one or part two? Uh, we'll do part two. Um, and then I found one that's a developer and he to kind of discuss what they go through and what their expectations and what state statutes are and you know how we should govern ourselves. So let me, oh, it's the, you don't do Zoom much anymore so it's not always as easy as it. Okay, share that. It's thinking about it. Kind of, yeah. Briefly describe what happened. It crashed. <laughs> Zoom I can be pretty brief. It's <coughs> not responding. Well, fabulous. 
Good thing you answered the question before we got started. We could have been on your train, but no. <laughs> he crashed. I can't want you to close that window first. You can't multitask. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. Won't we'll have reflex. I don't know. Just hit the X in the little right. X in the top right hand corner. He's tried it. It didn't work. He's trying that. Jeez. <sighs> okay. Your system is in need of a critical update. I can see that. <coughs> the little red circles down on the bottom. Always. That's what that means. You probably don't want to do that right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still trying to figure out where everything went. Try closing that window from that. Well, right click on that. There you go. Should be an X. There you go. Yeah. <coughs> it doesn't tell me where everything went. <laughs> I, have to, I have to launch it again because it crashed. There you go. Okay. Meg Ryan's our instructor. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> Oh, of course, now it doesn't want to. Hold on. Oh, oh no. Well, it's, where's my sound? There it is. Welcome to the Land Use Academy of Utah. I'm Meg Ryan. Today, we're going to talk about part two of the Fantastic Four. Do you remember them? Let's recap. The first one is how to write your own meeting rules. That's rules and procedures, Title 10, Chapter 3. That's what we're going to do today, so hold on. And then number two is the Open and Public Meetings Act. That's OPMA. Remember, we love acronyms in planning. And then number three, which is grandma. No, not the family. It's the Government Records Access and Management Act. That's where we learn how the public has right to access our information. Number four, how to comply with Ethics Act. That's already online, so I know you've already all watched it. Here's our agenda for the next few minutes. And remember, every good meeting has an agenda. I'm going to tell you what the state requires, where you can find it, and the resources you have to figure out how to comply. You get to do all the heavy lifting. So in the public sector, we've traded efficiency for transparency. We're doing the public's business in public. This means that we have an extra set of rules that we need to comply with, what we're going to talk about today. So there are no mandatory rules set down by the state legislature for city or town council meetings. However, they say you must have your own rules and procedures. You have to adopt your own. The content is up to you. And the reference is Title 10, Chapter 3. So do we have rules and procedures? Uh, do yes. we do? Yeah. Does everybody have a copy of them? Yes. I believe so, yes. More likely than not. <laughs> if not, let me know. There's also a copy out here that those in the audience, if they wanted to right. look at them, could. Part six, we recommend that you kiss, keep it simple, and rely on civility, but plan for adversity. Here are some ideas for things you may want to include in your rules and procedures. And remember, the content is up to you. It should reflect your own locality and your own customs and procedures. You can have it formal, you can have it informal. Just spell it out so that everyone's clear on how you're going to run the meetings. So, you might want to consider putting in something about when you hold regular and special meetings, what the rules are to call those special meetings. Quorum defined. You definitely want to put this one in. Why? Because the quorum is required for a final action or vote. So you're going to want to have that detail how many depending on how for many quorum? votes you have on a board or commission. Four. Attendance. Four. You're There's probably going to want to have something yeah. about how many meetings you can miss in a year. And if you miss them, is that grounds for dismissal? whatever works best for your community. How votes are taken and how they're reconsidered. And then you'll want to have rules for the public. 
Do you want to have some idea of how they interact or some ground rules? Something maybe about meeting adjournment. Do you want to stop at 9 o'clock at night? Do you want to stop at 10 o'clock at night? You sure. can do that. You just need to spell it out in these rules and What procedures. time do we stop? The other thing I want to add about this is that under the state statute, you have Pretty to have sure them do. on your website. No new items and you have to have them at the back of the room at the meeting. Why is this? <clears throat> Transparency. We all just need to know how it's going to work. So we make the rules, but what about the procedures to process those rules? Well, lucky you, there are procedures set by the state of Utah, and they fall under the OPMA. Yes, another acronym, Open and Public Meetings Act. So let's talk briefly about meetings. We all know that you run smooth, efficient, informative, and entertaining meetings. They go fast and quick, and there's never any issue. Right. They are what they are. We all have to figure out a good way to process through meetings. They are the form that we have to date that informs us, both the government on one side and the citizens on the other, about the land use processes that we're dealing with. I always say it's a two-way street. We are there as much to be informed as to inform the public, and they are there to educate us on items we may have missed as well. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between a public meeting and a public hearing. So a public meeting... Okay, what's the difference? A public meeting means anyone can attend. Public hearing, they get to, well, at least in our case, they come and speak. Is that? Well, they, they can come to a public hearing, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm public just saying meeting, they can come and speak. And throw, like, kind of like now, they, they don't talk. They're right. just here to yeah. observe. Yeah. 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 Hearing yeah. Public, public hearing, and they can't speak. So. Public hearing is when they're invited to come and yeah. speak. Yeah. 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 Is required by law to be open to the public and noticed. Mm -hmm. So we can hold a meeting with the Planning Commission and we can talk amongst ourselves about a work plan item or an upcoming meeting, but we don't need to involve the public. So when is input required? Well, let's shift to that, a public hearing. So a public hearing is an item that's specifically on your agenda in the public meeting that is open to the public. Let's talk about an example of that. So we have our agenda, it's a public meeting, and then we have an item on the agenda that requires a public hearing. So this public hearing serves a purpose. It's to inform the public and to let them speak and inform us. It happens within that public meeting. It's also specifically noticed and posted. So let's talk about that for a minute. Can we limit the time of input? Well, there's nothing in the state statute that says there has to be a set time limit. Think about due process though. If we are gonna set a time limit on when people can talk, then it has to be uniform. And also think about it. If we've asked them to come to a meeting and then we limit the time that they have to talk and maybe it's an item that they really want to vent and talk to us about or have really good information to inform us on, well, if we're going to do that, we have to remember due process. We have to be uniform and we have to treat each other fairly. When you have a public hearing and you think there's going to be lots of input, think about ways that you can manage that. You can accept written comments. You can have the public hearing, which you're probably mandated to do under state law. There's also blog sites. There's the old-fashioned way of setting up a booth outside the supermarket on a Saturday morning. So think about all the ways that we can accept that input. Done that once. But particularly at the public <laughs> hearing, think again. about how you structure that beforehand. You don't and know if you're talking to more citizens. Meetings, yeah. We can yeah. always continue no, them to another anybody. night. Yeah. I know of some communities that say on their agenda, <coughs> we can't stop at 10 p.m. Because really, after 10 p.m., after a long day, with an item that really is going to affect our community for the long term, maybe we should continue this and pursue the conversation further so we can get it right. Mm -hmm. All right, we've talked about meetings. We've talked about the public hearing within the public meeting, remember? Now let's talk about notice. And I think this is important for several reasons. I like to say we give as good as we get. What do I mean by that? Well, what are we asking of the public when we ask them to come to these meetings? What is it that we're putting out there so they know what to come and talk about? Let's look at what's required by the state statute to actually publish notice for meetings. All the state asks of us is to give, basically, the notice of the date, time, and place of the first public hearing. And beyond that, it's up to us. In general, this is all that's required. So let's look at an example of what we typically do. I'm not picking on anyone in particular. This just happened to be one I picked off the website, so sorry, Daggett County. So in this notice, they have the date, time, and the place. Great, thank you, you complied with the statute. But let's get to the meat of 
what they're asking folks to come comment on. It says here the request is to change the A20 to the R, R and a half. Okay, anyone outside of you planning geeks know what that means? No. Nope. Perhaps we could look at it a little differently and say in some plain language, we're looking at a request to change agricultural land to high density residential. This is a policy decision that we're going to be debating. So before we make any changes to the law, please come give us your input, your thoughts, your feelings, your raw emotions. How do you really feel about changing ag to residential? Are you happy? Are you sad? See what I mean? A little different twist. We give as good as we get. So the more information we can give to the public, maybe the better input we'll get. Tell them exactly what we're asking of them. Maybe it will go a long way. Maybe it won't, but let's take another try. Let's take a look at a sample agenda. This is the We Got It Right City Planning Commission agenda. You set the agenda at the local level. So what's on it is up to you. These are just suggestions that I have. Maybe a different way to organize the agenda so that the public as well as the commissioners can run through the meeting in maybe a more efficient way. So I've separated items out into administrative, legislative, and maybe you could even add action items at the end. So I've separated them because it's important to remember what hat you wear when you're making action on an item. And remember, you can refer back to our What Hat Do You Wear video so you can refresh yourself on how you move through those agenda items. So we have administrative item, we have a legislative Damn item. And typically, all our legislative <laughs> items will probably have a public hearing. Again, you can segment the agenda in any fashion that you wish. Just try to make it clear. Use plain language. Help people walk through the process. All right, we've talked about rules and procedures, we've talked about meetings, we've talked about some things to consider. And remember, these are suggestions. It's up to you to craft your own rules and procedures that fit your own community. But let's recap as well on the Fantastic Four. Rules and procedures, we just talked about that today. Open and Public Meetings Act, Grandma, and the Ethics Act. Four things that you all need to know. So we've provided you a good start to get on your way to draft those rules and procedures. But remember, always consult your city attorney before you adopt any resolution or ordinance. So now, go forth and meet. <laughs> uh, so you notice on our agendas, not work sessions. You have action items, legislative and administrative. That way it's a little more easier for those in the audience to understand which hat you are wearing at what time. They may not understand the difference between the two, <laughs> but um, you're, you know, legislative, you wear a different hat. Yeah, I was just going to say I really like that you do that. So. Well, we try. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now. Do you like her picture mm -hmm. of Meg Ryan? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this weird new tool is quickly becoming cool. the most oh. popular Christmas gift of 2020. What? It combines Jason's all the tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stop everyone, yourself. and welcome to the Land Use Academy of Utah. My name is Brent Bateman. I'm the lead attorney of the Office of the Property Rights Ombudsman. And joining me here today for our discussion is Chris Gambrulis from the Property Rights Coalition. Hey, Chris. Hey, Brad. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for having me. Good. good. Or Chris, before we start, tell homes. us a little bit about the Property oh, Rights Coalition. Really? Yeah. So yeah. the Property Rights Coalition is a group that we formed back in 2006, primarily of uh, residential developers and home builders. Okay. We got together um, to uh, advocate for uh, ordinances and statutes that related to zoning and development codes. Uh, because there was really nobody talking about those things except city attorneys and private attorneys who were suing cities. And so we saw that there was a space to have the conversation with practitioners of land development and that we could, um, you know, hopefully avoid some of the problems that we had seen. Uh, not necessarily to put the attorneys out of business, but certainly to, to you know, to give some, uh, uh, some, some context by the practitioners who we're actually doing the work. Uh, so we got together and uh, since 2006 we've been working collaboratively with your office, with the League of Cities and Towns, with the Association of Counties, with others, 
um, and bringing the voices uh, from the private side, Property Rights Coalition, the home builders, and the realtors. Property Rights Ombudsman, Property Rights Coalition, not affiliated, but definitely have the same goals, and that's making sure that property rights get protected. Yeah, absolutely. You know, property rights are vital to our democracy, to our form of government, to the operation of government, uh, and and uh, while they're not absolute, we've given we've given up some of that to zoning so that we could live in a society in a more structured society. <laughs> so we've given up a few of those things, and we understand that. Um, but at the same time, once the rules are established, um, people who have those property rights uh, have a reasonable expectation that they will be protected. So I understand you have a message for private citizens and local governments today. What is that message? Well, first off, it's thank you. It's thanks for your service. Um, well. People uh, get involved <laughs> in, in local government um, because they want to be involved, because they want to participate, uh, and, it, and it, it, it's a it's a sacrifice of time, and, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, no one ever got rich, you know, being a, a local city council member. It's a, it's a real sacrifice, so thank you. You know, we're all in this together. We actually do need each other, and we're not, we're really not the enemy. It's important for local officials to remember that cities don't build cities. Um, we, we build the cities. We take the risk. We finance. Um, infrastructure, we finance construction, we've paid our design consultants, we paid the city's engineering staff, we paid development fees and planning fees, and, and um, we pay permit fees and impact fees. Um, and so we were paying our way, we're, we're, no one's asking for a, a handout. Um, but, uh, uh, but at the end, we're actually implementing the general plan. So your work is how the city <coughs> functions. It's how the city uh, receives revenue. It's how the city's plan gets implemented. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the time, <coughs> the plans are, are pretty well thought out and, and pretty well written. Um, and zoning maps, by and large, reflect uh, you know what what is in that general plan. Mm -hmm. And you know, cities that that aren't growing um, either don't have a really healthy economy around them, but the, the cities, you know, particularly along the Wasatch Front and Washington County that have vibrant economies are growing. Um, and so we're we're part of that uh, we're part of that process of, of building that community. So the cities and the private developers have the same goal, trying to build a beautiful city. Trying to build a beautiful city. Um, where where our goals diverge a little bit is we're profit motivated um, and uh, uh, that doesn't mean we, we don't want the best city. Um, we we uh, want to derive um, a reasonable profit. But a beautiful product, a beautiful city, is going to lead to better profits for you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So why is it so often that developers are considered to be the bad guys? Well, probably for a couple of reasons. One is that um, uh, communities may have had an experience with a bad developer, sure. a bad actor, um, and, uh, and and that can happen, um, just like with any other profession. Unfortunately, uh, we in the development community we are very prominent in the community. When we build something, um, everybody sees it. A lot of people see it, and if something goes wrong, you know people hear about it. Um, you know the other is that because we are profit motivated in the end, um, sometimes people have this instinctive feeling that that they're being harmed if someone else is going to make a profit. We see we see a lot of that. Um, and and it's, uh, it's a difficult thing to try and navigate in, in a public process. But if you can't make a profit, you can't do business. And if you can't do business, you can't build the city. That's right. And you'll, you'll invest somewhere else. These folks who often think you're the enemy, they come to planning commission meeting. How should a local government respond to that? Public engagement and public dialogue, <clears throat> public comments are very healthy. Most people in the development community really do appreciate the, the public engagement. Um, and, and it should be encouraged and, and, and we, we, we sit and take, you know, 
very good notes because we'll always get a nugget or two of some great ideas. Um, it's when it changes to public clamor, and that becomes very uh, uh, counterproductive um, in, in the public process. Can you explain what public clamor means? You know, it's one of those things where you know it when you see it. Sure. It's when emotion uh, comes into the process over um, reasonable and rational thought. Facts, as opposed to opinions, for example. Absolutely. So local government officials are programmed to listen to and respond to these kind of concerns that you're talking about. What should they do? We'll certainly take them into, into account. Um, but we are required, in most cases, to produce a lot of studies. And these are objective studies done by professionals. A traffic study, for instance, will predict with very good accuracy um, the traffic patterns that will have that, that will occur on a property, um, on neighboring properties, on uh, arterial and collector roads around there, uh, and and that's evidence. And so, if the, if the concern is traffic, then you know certainly listen to that. But if if the city has asked us to pay for and produce a traffic study, it's important that they take that traffic study and accept that evidence unless there's evidence to the contrary, as opposed to just public clamor or opinions. You mentioned that you're required by the city or the county to produce these kinds of studies occasionally, and I know there's other requirements that you sometimes have to meet. Cities and, and uh, local governments, and, and in some cases counties that operate as land use authorities have standards. They have development standards. They've got road standards with gaps <coughs> and um, for all the infrastructure that, that is installed. All of the work that we do, the engineering work and the planning work, um, should comply with all of those standards. Once they do, uh, and we present that objective uh, information to a, a land use authority, what we really like to say is this is what you've given as our standards, we've complied with that, and, and uh, we need a, an approval so we can move forward. So they can't just make up new standards for you, they have to follow what they have in their ordinances. Yes, that, that would be, uh, um, and, and most of them do a pretty good job of that, um, uh, but, but on occasion, uh, because of public clamor or, or for whatever reason, um, that doesn't happen. So the time to decide what the city wants their plan and their city to look like is at a legislative level with the city council. And at the general plan stage. Right. Um, you know, the, the general plan um, by statute should contain um, a lot of information about what the growth of the community is and what it should look like. Um, and to the, to the extent that the general plan is written with the market in mind, right. it's going to be successful. Um, and the market changes, and that's why general plans have to change. Um, they have to be fluid. Um, you know, we've seen in the last, uh, you know, eight or ten years, a real change in retail sales and retail sales tax and point of sale um, sales tax uh, uh, collection, and and that has changed uh, dramatically, and, and is going to change how general plans need to look. So cities have to be willing to go back and look at their general plans um, and, a, and adapt those to the market uh, and to their land use plan. So how does that affect the market and the ability to develop a city when, um, because of public clamor or whatever other reason, the city deviates from that plan or deviates from their own ordinances? There's a lack of predictability. Uh, time is, is always our enemy. Uh, and so the longer it takes to to navigate the process, uh, the more uh, the, the the more expensive it is, um, and uh, so many times uh, developers will either give up, in which case the community's lost an opportunity to you know have some quality growth, uh, or they'll build something that doesn't work to the market, and they'll see uh, a uh, you know a failed project. So if a local government has ordinances and requirements and as a developer you comply with those in all respects, you expect to be approved. We do. You have a right as a property owner to <coughs> use your land in compliance with the local ordinances. There's a, a question that comes up many times in public hearings and that is why does a developer 
have a property right. They've come into this neighborhood, you know, what gives them a property right? And the answer is that we are either the property owner, so by virtue of just being the property owner, we have that right, or we're acting as the agent of the property owner. Um, you know, if it's, let's, for example, let's say it's a farmer who's been farming this 20 acres for three generations, and they want to sell their ground and, uh, and, and create an inheritance for their, for their children and their grandchildren. Um, well, when we enter into contract with them to purchase their property, we actually have a property right at that moment. But the, the current property owner has to sign the application right. um, consenting to whatever uh, change is going to be made. Let's say it's going from an agricultural zone to a residential zone, for instance. Um, and, and it's fully in compliance with the general plan, for instance. Um, well, that property owner is actually the petitioner. They're, they've signed the application. And so, yeah, it, it actually is that the, that the developer has a property. <coughs> Say, I'm the neighbor. What about my property rights? I've heard that before. Or what about the city's property rights, for example? That's, that's a balance. Um, so cities have the, the police power to, to zone and to create, uh, to, to create their ordinances. That's right. But then they're obligated to follow them. A neighbor has property rights on their property, and they have the right to speak in a hearing. Mm -hmm. But just as our property rights don't extend over to their fence, uh, over the fence into their yard, their property rights don't extend into the farmer who's been farming for 20 years. Everyone should be expected to follow the local ordinances in order to protect my property rights, your property rights, the neighbor's property rights, everybody's property rights. Absolutely. And, you know, in, in particularly in fast-growing cities that we've experienced over the last 20 years, although this isn't an unusual, this isn't a new phenomenon, the Wasatch Front hasn't always been wall-to-wall -wall suburbs. Right. Um, it was farms, you know, for 100 years. And little by little, we've been building our communities. Um, it never ceases to amaze me, though, how it's usually the, the person who just moved in or has been there for eight years and says to the, the farmer and his family who've been there for three generations that they shouldn't be allowed to sell their property and have it be developed into homes just like theirs. Um, where, you know, eight years before, a farmer sold his ground and uh, somebody came in and put in the infrastructure and built homes or maybe a shopping mall or maybe an office building right. um, but we're building by and large on 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 what used to be you know small farms you're trying to run a business you would like to make a profit you would like your property rights protected and in all of that you are willing and eager to be a team member in building the communities with the local government. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the, our property values um, Two minutes left. when we have the highest quality product. Right. So it's <coughs> counterintuitive to think that uh, somebody who's willing to invest in risk um, wants to diminish their own property values. So being a team player with local governments we think will result in the highest quality product at the end of the day. Is there a need for your industry? Is there a need for growth? Do we have a need for new homes and new businesses? If there wasn't a need for it, there wouldn't be uh, any new homes being built. If there wasn't a need for it, we wouldn't be building roads. Um, you know, the predictions are that in uh, 20 to 25 years, we're going to double the, the population of the state of Utah. The vast majority of that is going to happen along the Wasatch Front. The vast, vast majority of that. That means we're going to go from 3 million people to over 5 million people in a pretty short period of time. As a representative of the Property Rights Coalition and as a developer, to learn from your experiences, to learn your perspective, it, it's an opportunity for local governments to take that and, and implement it just to make their communities all that much better. And to listen to what you have to say can only help, in my opinion. So thank you. Do you have any final message you'd like to give? Again, I'd just like to say you know, thank you for your service. Um, and uh, we, we appreciate the relationships uh, and the opportunity to help build your communities. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate you being here today. I think it can only benefit all of us.
Thank you all for joining us today. And be sure to check out some of our other topics and videos on our official Land Use Academy of Utah Luau website. Okay, any questions? Yeah. I've watched that one before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've watched that one before? Yeah. It's good though. Well, it's always good to hear it from the other person's side. Uh, you know, we usually hear just our stuff and what the public has to say, and the developers just usually quiet because they've presented their project and just want the project built. So, um, you know, he, he's right in the fact that you know property rights are property rights, regardless if I'm building you know 700 units or one house. Uh, your property rights stop at your property, and mine begin at my you know at my property. So, um, and if you want to protect that property rights go buy that property. Yep. And then you can stop that development. <laughs> That's all it takes is go buy the property and yep. stop the development. Yep. So I, I thought it was interesting, um, kind of something different yep. that we haven't necessarily viewed. I, you know, you may have seen it before, but if not, I thought it was a, a good little twist mm -hmm. of, of things oh, yeah. to kind of give it a different perspective. Any other questions that come to mind from watching the two videos? I mean, some of you have been on this forever. <laughs> I, I, I've been on the side of the developer, okay? Um, we put a casino in Las Vegas and uh, on the border really? highway. Vegas has it, casinos? Vegas has a casino. <laughs> Just one? Flash. flash. <laughs> yeah. And when we, we built the casino, Samstown, it went smooth. It was fine, okay? After a couple of years there, uh, my partner who owned the hotel decided that uh, he's missing a market because they had a lot of people that had RVs but no place to park the RVs and he still had to develop a land and so we wanted to develop that as a temporary RV park. You could only stay there a week or whatever it was, okay? But it was basically so you come in, you, you know, you don't have to pay the hotel room and a parking yeah. uh, fee also. And uh, he's, he's smart, okay? Uh, and so we had a community uh, outreach at the hotel in one of the big uh, conference rooms. And we must have had, we had a whole bunch of people, okay? More than 100. Mm -hmm. And they had the pitchforks and they had the flamethrowers. They were not happy about the RV park. They didn't have any problem with the casino. It was the RV park that they had the problem with. And our real estate guy, probably like this guy, is up there in the thing, and he's talking to them, and they're willing to throw apples and, you know, <laughs> rotten fruit. This is not going well. And uh, it just so happened that the leader of their group had worked with me when I was in the DA's office. He was in the parole and probation's office. So we talked, took a short recess, he and I went in the back room, and we worked it out, <laughs> okay? But the public outrage was the only time I really ever saw that in Vegas. And the other thing, meetings, the latest I've ever been in a planning meeting is 2.30 in the morning. Not here. Mm, no, oh, Vegas. Yeah. yeah, Vegas. Uh, not here. It hasn't been <laughs> for a while. <laughs> So, anything else? <coughs> we do have, wasn't there an email you sent out about something in November? Is that still, I can't remember what day it was, but. Oh, of the Wasatch Front Regional Council planning? It's yeah. like Thursday night or something like that. Yeah, it's still coming up. Okay. I'll send out a reminder. Just kind of reminding everyone. If you can go, yeah. great. If you can't, don't worry. They just want your opinion. <laughs> I did see if you go look on the UTA's Facebook and website and stuff, they have um, surveys you can go take to about just transportation in the area. And I figure you guys would all, you've kind of seen how it works within a city a little bit, so you'd be good people to go fill it yeah. out. Be more yeah. Wasatch Front than UTA, but. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is just, I'm sorry, I'm 
just saying that's another thing that people could go and do if they want to yep. put their opinion out there. Okay, what's the blackboard? Well, it's commissioner's minute now. I think if there's no other yeah. questions or... <coughs> Turn over, we'll have for commissioner's minute. Anybody have anything? Um, I was wondering, the next meeting will be November 8th? It will that? not. It will not. That okay. is election, election, election night. day. Election night. Yes. And I remember... Right. A particular person in our group who said we will not have a meeting that night, <laughs> way back in January. <laughs> okay. So it has been canceled all year. So just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I'm sure emails have been out there that you've seen about the uh, holiday dinner that they're not going to do it until January. So yeah. please reply if you haven't yeah, already. Reply, let them know. What date works? <laughs> Last year they did it just down here. It was really good. There's not really a lot going on ever in January, so yeah. Yeah. everybody's just recovering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing else. Uh, staff update. Okay. What's the blackboard you ask? Yes, yeah, Steve. What's the blackboard <laughs> for? <laughs> Well, the Royce Apartments um, mm. over there by Billy Dally's, mm -hmm. um, they didn't have a materials board, so they wanted to bring it in, and then they had a question. Wanted you guys to kind of take a look at it. Um, so they've provided a little slideshow here. So in your ordinance, um, it talks about Primary materials will result in the intended visual aesthetic are metal, including architectural metal panels, cladding, glass, brick, and natural stone. These materials should be predominantly featured. Other permitted primary materials include high quality durable <coughs> materials such as stone, brick, fiber cement board, uh, shingled, and quality or panel siding and glass. Other quality aesthetic materials may be approved during the site planning process uh, with the approved ample of, sample of ex examples of high quality local installations. Uh, the secondary face facade materials, including materials that are limited to the accent, could include concrete, wood, and ephus. Ephus is just more, st is just stucco. Yes, yeah, stucco. Mm -hmm. Or better it translated as exterior insulation and finishing system. So the question is, um, and I'll, so kind of the typical ephus is it really just, it looks like stucco, it's kind of bland in color. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that they've got is kind of here, it, it does have a, a texture to it, um, it's a little bit more higher quality, they call it amber stone. Um, and then concrete, again it, concrete can be used as a second material more towards just details and, and stuff like that. Um, but in their building, uh, they of course presented, because they're architects, you know, <laughs> buildings that are made of architecture, you've got a couple airports, uh, Northrop Grumman over there, uh, just north of the Hill Air Force Base, several little buildings in Salt Lake where EFIS and <coughs> architectural concrete are, are more used. Um, Salt Lake, they're not really concerned with the back sides and sides of buildings, more the front. Um, they kind of give some examples again of uh, materials that are being used elsewhere. So when they finally get to their building, of course their pre presentation to me was better than I'm giving it to you. Um, there we go. So for the most part, second beyond the front, um, you know, the front you've got the the stucco, the metal claddings, both the copper and the and the dark materials. You've got three types of ephus materials, so they've got a good melange of, of everything. It's more of the bottom story, sides rear that they're asking about. Uh, because most of that is their parking lot, 
So again, the front, you have a lo lots of good uh, materials just kind of here and there, highlighting sections, not highlighting others. And then you get, oops, you get to the rear where you've got, this is the back side that will face the, the trail or the railroad, whichever one you want to call it. And it's all concrete. You know, concrete can only be so much, but they're, they're they want to highlight that it's they're not proposing the typical concrete that you see of this low quality where you see the board materials mm -hmm. the squeaking out. It's more of the architectural, no, the one in the middle, middle. where it's smooth. It's and again, that's where the the buildings that are, this is the old JFK airport in, in New York that's all concrete. Um, again, north of Grumman is just all, it's different color concrete, but it's all smooth. So they're asking if you guys are okay with allowing for what would technically be the first level, but in the back and the sides to be concrete. <coughs> The architectural. The one benefit I see to it is we see it in um, other commercial areas is that the concrete is a lot easier to um, clean off graffiti than it is on a stucco product. A stucco product mm -hmm. penetrates so bad, the concrete is much easier to clean up and keep clean and presentable. So, well, the stucco you have to repaint it. There's no real cleaning it up. If they if they mm -hmm. seal it properly, then it's. That's easy to yeah. take off, but if it's a stucco, then mm -hmm. because it goes into the texture, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Again, if they seal that concrete property, they shouldn't have any issue with. I mean, again, going back to the language in our ordinance. Yeah. I mean, is there any? Well, that's where that, that's. I just need some clarification again. Yeah, on that. What I like is kind of the first highlighted other high quality synthetic materials may be approved during. So they're basically giving you guys the allowance to say, okay. mm -hmm. you know yes, what, yes we, do, or yes we, don't. we do like this, it works well, or it doesn't work well, get rid of it, you know. It, it really kind of gives you <coughs> the ability to say, yes, it's a material, we it's listed in there. I mean, it, you can still say, well, in some cases, because the one side, the north side will face, so along this, will face Harmons. So to me it's like okay maybe some of it can be concrete and some of it let's bring down a different material so it's not all finished concrete it's got some of that the stuff that's up above that's come down below similar to what they've excuse me done in the front. On the north face are there any windows on the north face? On the uh, they'll have some kind of similar to the back I don't know if I can get there where it's little cause reliefs. Of, um, reliefs of because the parking lot is <coughs> down there want, they want to provide light so there will be some but mm. I'm more inclined to saying we'll bring some of that copper steel or some of that gray steel down yeah mm -hmm. don't just have it stop right there in that line yeah just ball. bring yeah. it down kind of what they've done in the front so when you look at the front facade they've got it in places so why yeah, not continue they can, that? Yeah, they can build it and then on the, and just bring it down. Side, yeah. Talking around the side to Harmons. Yeah, yeah okay. especially on that side because that's going to be seen more, more visible. Yeah, no. the back side <coughs> by the the train tracks and stuff. Access road, nobody sees it. No one sees it. Yeah, and into the south side. Into the south side, you've got who knows no, what. No one wants to see that anyway. So maybe we can commission but, them to but, paint them. Yeah, so and that, that could be, be something we <laughs> asked him too. Yeah, that's you know, be really cool. Maybe we have a local art contest or something. They'd go mm -hmm. out there and paint. I, 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 sometimes, if we're looking at a specific mural, they can actually design it into the concrete, and so that it's yeah. a recess. Maybe we get some type of metal of things like, like they do on the bridges. Huh? I would say on the east side, that's oh, against yeah. the trail. I, I mean, I don't There's know that. Stamp concrete. I'm f I'm fine with it. I would say on the south side, where we don't know what that's going to look like. In the next yeah, five, yeah. 10, 50, 20 years, might want to be a little more careful there because yeah. there could be something nice that goes in there someday. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'm also trying to picture. Other, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, no, I was going to say, I'm trying to picture when you're driving down the freeway, can you see Not really. any no. of that, just the top? Most right? of what you'll see is the top. top. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll see those. I mean, down the bottom here, it's the architectural concrete. It's just kind of got patterns to yeah, it. Yeah, I look fine with that. 
Yeah. Well, on the south side, I mean, it, it's not that this is the only finish they can have because they come and attach anything they want to yeah. to it. If the south side ever develops and we're worried about it, but. Well, I think with the style too, just that. That's more and just so you know, this is all a con one con. It's a concrete building, just has paint panels and that are cut out and cut in and whatever they call those little things, cornices. Cornices. So the consensus is is that in the back, yeah, Road Ford Freeway, well, concrete back would be good, back but all the other stuff it should be consistent. Yeah, yeah. I'm more concerned with the e the western and the west northern, and okay. north, yeah. not necessarily the eastern and the southern. Because the southern, it, it could be 20 years before Olson cell. Could be, or could be. And right now it's... Will be. This concrete will be, look even if the whole building Improved. was that, much better looking than... What's there now. What's yeah. there now. I hate to say it, but... <laughs> oh, we all know what's there. You won't have to say it. Maybe the, the plain concrete wall is better looking. Is that what you're really uh -huh. trying to say? Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> So if you're okay with that, I'll let them know. To, yeah, yeah. Because they're they're trying to finalize the details of, of their building and their site plan to resubmit. Um, so yeah, they, knew they forgot to send this to you, and I thought, well, I'll just take it to them and we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, so. I think we all like that. Okay. Other than that, that's all I have, really. Oh, other than I did get the general plan back from the, the consultant. I am finalized. I'm looking at the modern income housing plan because at the council we had to modify it again um, to today's new statutes that the, the state did. So I got to make sure the wording is is consistent. Other than that, most of them that I've most of the council persons I've talked to, it shouldn't take more than the next meeting. So. We'll see. Did you really <laughs> say that out loud? Hmm? Said, did you really say that out loud? <laughs> right on schedule, right? Well, I'd have liked it two years ago, but <laughs> COVID hit, so. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Which <laughs> wasn't you know, anybody's fault, <laughs> other than Chris's, because, you know, well. <laughs> I blame Chinese myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I think it's going to be an overall nice project. I, so you kind of see the the eastern facade. I, I would have yeah. liked to have seen more commercial being where this is. Yeah. To be frank, but I know that they're <clears> making <throat> an attempt. The, we'll this, see how that goes. This might drive it though if you're putting that many people right there. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, well, well they I do have, you know, know, more property north of Harmon. <clears throat> they are trying to buy the Olsons property. So Yeah. yeah. Well they are trying to well, I guess we haven't found out of that little. Yeah, the, the pawn Depot shop, shop, shop they're trying to make will go away and they'll build something in its yeah. place. Yeah. Just a commercial building. So. Did they ever find out about the road back there? If that is going to be changed at all? Um, it is a state road, so the state has jurisdiction over it. I've got our engineers looking who put it in and what it needs to be. Right so. now, it's part access into the Walgreens property, right? I don't think Walgreens, Walgreens and Harmons. And Harmons, Harmons you can get to. Can you get to Walgreens from that back road? Yeah. You, you, you turn in not north. heading you turn south. In yeah, yeah, north yeah, south. Yeah, just like maybe one north. way, but yeah, it, only, it only goes north anyway. Yeah. yeah. But well, for a little ways. But it turns into Common Sense, then eventually to yeah. Walgreens. So it's both of those properties. Yeah, you go through Common Sense to get to Walgreens. So there you go. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I don't think there's. Okay. But it technically but cuts whatever. in front of the car wash rather than the, the normal approach that you have to go around and around so. so other than that that's all I've got Great. Okay. just don't drive around the city you'll see a lot of building yeah. Abington right. Heights has got buildings going up and so does uh, Park 43 on 4300 West near Holiday Oil hmm. we got footings and foundations in okay. sounds great moved to uh, item number six I uh, look for a motion. Motion to adjourn. Um, I'll second it. Okay. So a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Don't go to sleep, Chris. All those opposed? This is what, four now, right? <laughs> wow. I think so. Who cares? <laughs> oh, was there a number? Well, yeah, Ryan's like, Ryan's I bet you can't go to the next four meetings without it. <laughs>
I think that was it. So now I'm going to oppose every single time. <laughs> I'm going to give it to 2.30 in the morning like Taurus. <laughs> I used to get paid for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay. 30 bucks. This is voluntary. <laughs> well, thank you. That doesn't nope. cover the yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was going to be a lot shorter meeting. <laughs> By the way, I hate it. Going and I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 oh, well, you're on the other side of the counter. Figure out here. Oh, so I'm on right after you. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> I do supposed to go. Oh, yeah. 20 years. Yeah, so it makes sense to. Oh, there's a circus. Yeah, there's a circus. Am I sure to change or make change or anything? Let me retire. Review one. Review ordinances that pertain certainly to our responsibility. Oh, we can. Yes. I mean, there's a way to. Well, I have. We do have. But do we have existing that. And how about the It's somewhere Glenda, Glenda told me that Glenda knows. It's actually yeah, yeah, kind of good for you know, right? so, so we have to dive into it to understand it before the meeting comes up. But I have some, some this kind of a little bit of knowledge. So we'll look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Training, so we'll look at Which of the 